BlackRock has just been hit by an $8.5 billion crater in their business after getting away with their corrupt ESG scam for well over a decade. Texas is the first state to damage the business where it hurts in its bank account, but other US states are following suit and taking fire once again. Inflation has been heavily spiked over the last few years by this short-sighted obsession with ESG and leftist principles that BlackRock used to take control of the financial world, but the curtain has finally been opened and we are currently witnessing BlackRock's slow but sure demise as more and more revelations come to light and assets are pulled from the company's control as a result of how they've used ESG to manipulate the markets to do exactly as they wish. I'm not expecting for you to sympathize with BlackRock here, I'm merely going to explain this $8.5 billion bombshell that just exploded and make it clear once and for all why this is all BlackRock's fault and why it's only going to get worse from here on out. BlackRock is the largest asset manager in the entire world, dwarfing all other competitors. And while they're often considered to be the company that owns the world, the truth is that they don't own it, they just control it. Whilst they are listed as the largest shareholders of almost every single publicly traded company, the reality is that they are merely custodians of these shares, holding on to them for their customers and investors. But while they don't own the shares, they do own the voting rights that come with the shares, and boy do BlackRock like to throw their weight around and use these voting rights to benefit themselves at the expense of not only their customers, but also the economy as a whole. Even though this is clearly a moral problem, it's also a legal problem for BlackRock and thousands of other institutions who have pushed ESG for so long. These corporations have a fiduciary duty to their investors and shareholders. They are legally required to do what is in the best interests financially of those parties, and ESG is blatantly forcing prices upwards, causing inflation and ignoring some of the most profitable investments in the world. And it isn't just a case of BlackRock not wanting to invest their own assets into things which go against the ESG ideals. It isn't even about BlackRock recommending to people that they take their corrupt ESG scores into account when making their own investments. It is BlackRock literally not allowing other people to invest into those certain industries themselves. BlackRock have taken it upon themselves to be the moral police with all things investing, and this is an industry where only the biggest players are true options, where ordinary people simply can't compete on any level, so when the entire industry unites behind BlackRock and acts as a cartel and does their best to destroy the investing landscape, ordinary people have no true recourse. Now we are in a transitional period. It's not just Blackstone, BlackRock and all the other banks, it's even their founders, with Larry Fink, BlackRock CEO himself, saying that America's debt crisis is more urgent than he can ever remember. And there is so much uncertainty right now, with Bloomberg literally running a million separate simulations on the outcome of this debt crisis, and 88% of them show that the debt-to-GDP ratio of the US is on an unsustainable path. I talked a couple of weeks ago about looking for investments in different countries, but you can reduce risk and still find growth with alternative assets like contemporary art. Now, it's been a while since I've talked about Masterworks here directly, so if you're unfamiliar, here's a quick rundown. Masterworks' data shows that as an asset class, post-war and contemporary art has a historically low correlation to traditional equities, meaning when the stock or bond market is trending down, the value of your art investment tends to be less affected. Masterworks is an award-winning art investment platform that buys blue-chip paintings, securitizes them, and allows you to invest in shares. Since inception, they've had 21 exits, each of them individually delivering a profit, not counting works still in holding, they've distributed back over 55 million to investor proceeds. Over 900,000 people have signed up so far, and when you're offering work from artists like Picasso, Basquiat, and Banksy, shares can run out in a hurry. But in honor of our partnership, my subscribers can still skip the waitlist and start investing today by using the QR code on screen or going to the link in the description. As with any investment, past performance is not indicative of future returns. Investing involves risk, so see important regulation A disclosures at masterworks.com cd. Now, ESG has been getting a very bad rap, especially as inflation has been such a major problem for the entire global economy, but also because ESG itself is simply a scam walked together by companies like BlackRock to give them more 
control and influence over the global economy. Supposedly, there's nothing wrong with ESG. Sustainable investment is a valuable thing to have in our economies as it ensures our economies and countries can thrive for decades and centuries to come so short-term priorities don't overwhelm the long-term reality. But in truth, ESG doesn't do that at all and it doesn't actually aim to do that either. The environmental aspect of ESG has really just been used to attack the oil and gas industries, to take investment away from them and funnel it into less efficient and more costly green alternatives. This alone costs consumers billions every year as energy prices are more expensive as a result and inflation rates consistently come in higher than we expect because we aren't using the most cost-efficient power sources. This happened literally just a couple of days ago with the US CPI sitting at a monthly to annualized rate of over 5%. And the worst thing about this all is that these disastrous rules only impact the West and other countries like China and India continue to ramp up their destructive burning of coal whilst we fool ourselves into thinking we're making a difference. The social and governance aspect of ESG really just relates to leftist policies intent on changing the political landscape. No longer are businesses allowed to focus on the business, now they have to focus on furthering that leftist agenda to the detriment of not only themselves but their customers and their investors too. Diversity, equity and inclusion is now a work in every major company in the world and it wastes resources, it causes bureaucracy and inefficiencies and at the end of the day is equivalent to burning money for no good reason. But corporations weren't ever actually allowed to avoid this self-sabotage as companies like BlackRock would ostracize them from the global economy and investment landscape if they dared to think for themselves and put their employees, investors and companies first. Thankfully, over the last couple of years and in particular in the wake of the inflation shocks we've seen since COVID, the world has awoken to how disastrous ESG truly is. You'll struggle to find even 10% of the population that actually supports this nonsense anymore and as a result of that, companies like BlackRock are losing ground and being heavily damaged as a result. Now we already know that Florida has been fighting back against BlackRock, ESG and wokeism in general, but Texas is on the warpath as well. Texas has actually just passed two laws that restrict government contracts with companies that take punitive stances towards fossil fuels and firearm industries. Basically, when a company decides to attack the oil or gas industry or the firearms industry, it is then illegal for Texas state organizations to do business with that corporation, ensuring monsters like BlackRock can't make a profit from the very state they are attacking and damaging. In particular, Texas has identified that 350 separate BlackRock funds are boycotting these industries, refusing to allow their customers to invest into what they want to, instead claiming that they know best. And now it's time for BlackRock to pay the piper, as they've started losing investors because of this well-placed law, meaning they can no longer get away with their deceitful business practices while still profiting off the people they are attacking and hurting. And that ultimately is why we've just seen the Texas Schools Fund pull eight point five billion dollars in assets away from BlackRock and we'll see plenty more examples like this coming shortly as well. Not only because Texas has already taken this action and many other Texas organizations will have to follow the school funds direction but also because there are many other states and governments going the exact same direction unhappy at this company's refusal to take their customers seriously and to put their best interests at heart. Throughout 2023, as these laws finally came into action, BlackRock lost $4 billion in assets, and already this singular withdrawal has doubled that for 2024, with much more pain almost certainly on the way for BlackRock. And so what is BlackRock's genius plan to win back these billions in lost assets, to defend their reputation and stop their downfall from accelerating? Well, they're publishing hit pieces against the Texas Permanent School Fund after they took their $8.5 billion in assets back, but this letter they published is verifiably false not to mention incredibly damaging to BlackRock's brand. Their first claim is that BlackRock has actually done the fund a favor by beating their benchmark targets and making them loads of money, which sounds nice, but that benchmark is literally just an estimation of the growth of the market as a whole, and these funds were literally just invested into index funds. So the idea that BlackRock was in any way responsible for these gains, or that they're the only asset manager capable of achieving them, is completely false. BlackRock then claimed that they haven't used their ESG ESG agenda to discriminate against certain industries and they've published a list of some of their investments into the oil and gas industry as evidence that they actually love fossil fuels and don't corrupt the financial markets with ESG. 
this is of course completely false because no one is claiming that BlackRock is boycotting these industries entirely, but what they absolutely are doing is using the voting rights of their customers to redirect literally thousands of companies across the United States to comply with ESG's scam. To this reality, BlackRock didn't say a single word, choosing instead to try and misdirect their readers instead. And why don't they try and deny this claim? Because just a couple of years ago, BlackRock actually used to brag about this fact on their website. Finally, BlackRock are also claiming this is all due to political corruption and that they're subject to a vicious witch hunt by saying that the reasons and process for Texas to withdraw these eight and a half billions in funds happened behind closed doors and smoke and mirrors to hide the truth from everyone. This also is categorically false as the process was the Texas legislature passing a law, the governor then signing it, and the controller generating a list of companies in violation to the law and then the pension fund abiding by that law and removing their funds from BlackRock. Nothing could be clearer and more above board but that didn't stop BlackRock from outright refusing to tell the truth instead of blaming shadow governments and corruption for their own failures and immorality. Of course BlackRock are running some more expected damage control too. They no longer dare say the acronym ESG and have scrubbed all mentions of it off their website but the practices which make ESG are still a reality and so the pain in their downfall is still going to arrive whether they resort to baseless attacks or not. What should we expect going forward? Well simply more of the same. More investors pulling their capital from BlackRock, more angrily typed letters from BlackRock claiming they do nothing wrong, and more negative press damaging the company's standing as the largest asset manager in the world. Their influence is falling, their assets are reducing, and the company is in full damage control mode, desperate to reverse this catastrophic power grab they orchestrated for so many years. It is merely now a matter of time and nothing else.